Welcome guys to another episode of United Transfer Talk and in this one I have five stories that has caught my eye over the past week and I'm going to go over them right now. And the first one is an update to a long running saga as you know uh, it's Robin Van Persie it's been dragging on all summer long and I think a lot of us has been growing to you know frustrated uh, as to where and when this transfer is going to happen and if this transfer is going to happen at all and you know it's been dragging for quite a while and there's been a lot of talk that we have agreed but Arsene Wenger's uh, unwilling to sell to a direct rival which you know it's understandable because if we are going to uh, receive one of their best players it's going to be you know uh, a negative for them in order for them to challenge for the title as uh, Van Persie is a, a great player and they ideally don't want to strengthen one of their main rivals and would uh, prefer if he did go abroad. Uh, you know, Juventus has been talked up a lot in in the past summer, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen to them. Uh, you know, one I was talk, uh, listening to TalkSport, and one of the uh, Italian experts has said that Van Persie's uh, agent has rang... Juventus personally in order to tell them that Manchester United uh, has now be uh, are the kind of like preferred destination of Van Persie and you know that's going to be have a huge twist and you know uh, kind of like deciding factor as to where this uh, saga is going to end and like I said Van Persie he wants to come to United now and it's basically just between Arsenal and United in order to get a fee uh, ready um, you know the fee is talking about 20 plus million uh, I think a lot of you guys and myself has been saying on Twitter that um, sometimes you know he's 29 uh, going on to 30 years up of our age now and so um, he's not going to have a lot of resale value so I don't think more than 20 million should be uh, spent on Van Persie even though you know he has a uh, you know goal scoring record of last season uh, the top goal scorer in the league so he obviously is a quality quality player but coming into almost the the autumn years of his career you're kind of like uh, undecided as to how much you should spend on him. 20 million on a player at this uh, age and this stage of his career with only one year remaining, I think that's a good offer. But like again, uh, I think there is a extra premium just because it's United. I think if it was Juventus, I think Arsenal would have accepted the 20 million pounds uh, bid rock for, uh, like already. But it's just, again, just because of the rivalry and the kind of like relationship between Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson that there has been this kind of like, uh, kind of like stalemate with this negotiation. Um, some have said that David Gill, after the uh, United stock flotation in New York, has uh, been kind of like drafted in in order to seize out this deal and he's basically going to do uh, business with Arsenal directly and, you know, taking kind of like over Selex role in the negotiations process and you know this could be a, a huge deal breaker because David Gill chief executive he is the person that you know a lot of other football clubs uses in order to buy players and because you know other clubs they don't let their manager have the whole control of the club and you know Selex that is one of his kind of like trademark uh, abilities in order to uh, operate the club so well is that he has the whole control and other people do what he tells them in, instead of the other way around and so uh, this deal it could drag on to the final day I don't know uh, hopefully it doesn't because it's going to be very difficult for Van Persie to like you know fit in straight away if he just comes uh, you know on the last day a couple of hours to go um, it's better to do it as soon as possible really to get him some time to get used to the style of play etc so um, this deal it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon we, even though a lot of you guys and myself want it to and there's no doubt in Van Persie a and Percy's ability but again the deal and uh, the wage and the fee involved is the stumbling block just purely on his uh, age right now so uh, what do you guys think of this deal and you know how much are you guys willing to spend on Van Persie I myself uh, no more than 20 million pounds and you know give him a uh, wage parity with Wayne Rooney if he likes but again hopefully this deal will reach a conclusion soon leave a comment below on that story guys and the second story I'm going to talk about is a new player actually and it's still with Isco 
Um, he is a 20-year-old playing for Malaga in Spain. Uh, as you know, Malaga or you know, they were this up-and-coming club where they had a very similar structure to Man City, where they're going to spend a lot of transfer money and build a team, you know, very very fast. Uh, however, there has been some financial crisis. I'm not sure as to you know the core problem of that club uh, but you know Santi Cazorla uh, he already went to Arsenal this summer due to that problem and he went for around uh, 17 million pounds and you know that shows they are willing to accept money for their best talents and Isco is regarded as one of their you know remaining starlets in Spain and he could very well you know press into the senior side in the very near future he uh, played in the Olympics and he looked uh, very good to me. Like you know, his final balls in it was very good. His he has the eye for the pass definitely. Uh, one thing I would say that he's not the quickest, if I may say. Uh, you know that could potentially be a problem in the Premier League. But as to where he plays, uh, which is kind of like the number ten role, I don't think that can uh, that needs a, a huge amount of pace because he's always gonna give the little passes, little through balls. He's not gonna beat defenders. You know out for uh, just for pay so Isco he plays to his ability very well however um, just like I said then he does like to operate as the number 10 role and yesterday uh, Rooney and Kagawa both played in that same kind of role so it's going to be difficult if Isco does come I'm not sure um, if he does or can operate in a central midfield like a Xavi or a uh, Cothola who who operates in the midfield uh, conduct the uh, you know pace and tempo of the game I'm not sure because I haven't watched a whole lot of him but um, yeah just from the Olympics alone I, I saw that he played in the number 10 role and that could be a potential problem just simply because uh, we, we have so many or two world-class players who are operate in that position and it's difficult to see how he would you know displace them both. Uh, so um, Isco, it does look like he, he might be available. I think he might be for around £20 million and because they're only selling because due to the financial crisis, um, otherwise I don't think Malaga would be offering all these you know quality players and they have a quite a good team because uh, like I said they were financially backed by uh, some Middle Eastern oil uh, you know family and that's how they got a lot of these transfer targets but however due to the, you know the lack of funding or whatever the reason is uh, they have to sell a lot of their star and best players so it's go it does uh, I think it could happen if we do push for it, but again, there's been no significant kind of like push from the club uh, to for this transfer. So, what do you guys think of Isco, and how much would you guys uh, willing to pay uh, for his services? Leave your comment below, guys. And the third story I'm going to talk about is to do with a another brand new central midfielder that has been talked this week, and it's to do with Ganzo. Um, you. Some of you guys may know him. He has been, you know, one of these black Brazilian players who has been talked up quite a lot in the past few years, and he is, you know, almost as high high profile as Neymar or Lucas Moura. Uh, he is a 22 years old, play for Santos, and you know, links up with Neymar every single week. So he has his name has been talked for quite a long while now. And again, he can operate within the central midfield role. And or the number ten role where he's playing behind the main striker, uh, he is twenty five uh, million pounds. That's his transfer fee, and that's gone down significantly since last uh, summer because Ganzo, he's you know twenty two, getting on a bit now in terms of his you know wonder kid status. He needs to prove himself uh, quite a lot now. And like I said, a lot of people have been talking about him as you know the next great thing in Brazil, but. Due to the fact he's had injury problems, after injury problems, as prevent him to fulfil his potential to the max, you know. So he's gonna. Um, earlier this summer, there was talk that he might go to, you know, Porto, uh, in order to gather some European experience before he goes uh, into a, you know, a tougher league. And that is the normal route that a lot of these Brazilian players are going these days. Uh, because you know the Portuguese league are very similar to uh, the Brazilian league, and they 
obviously speak the same language so that would help them in you know uh, bedding them down within Europe so that was the talk that Ganzo might have taken if he if he did go to Porto but um, it has uh, emerged this week because we missed out on Lucas Moura to P- Paris Saint-Germain uh, Salah has turned to Ganzo because he you know a lot of you guys has been asking uh, you know the club to sign a new central midfield players etc and Ganzo he might very well fit that bill but he, he kind of like reminds me of Anderson in terms of his career so far you know very very talented player no doubt about that uh, great left foot however almost a very serious a knee or knee injury has almost kind of like uh, stumped his uh, growth almost and his potential no doubt is still there but he has lost a bit of edge in terms of you know a bit of pace etc like that so Ganzo he looks very similar to Anderson to me uh, in terms of his play style wise etc like that but like I said uh, this deal might happen but I highly doubt that it will happen this summer anyway uh, you know I think Ganzo the more likely route for him would be to Porto and then perhaps if he does well then the bigger European clubs might come in and swoop him so what do you guys think of this story and what are you guys uh, opinions on Ganzo as you know in general so leave a comment below on that story guys and the fourth story I'm going to talk about is to do with Ali Sissoko uh, I wrote or one of you guys actually wrote uh, an article talking about Ali Sissoko and I posted on the website and you know Ali Sissoko, Sissoko 24 years old playing for Leon, and this week has emerged to say that he has uh, Premier League ambitions and he would like to compete here uh, before you know before the long or new future and Sissoko he has been regarded you know as one of the best left backs or coming up uh, upcoming talents within European football and the left back has been uh, position has been talked about a whole lot this summer you know the form of Patrice ever last season uh, Fabio had gone out on loan so he was going to be his understudy etc like that and however i from what I hear from, you know, the indications of, you know, Salex talking within the press and the interview he gave, he gives, it doesn't seem to me that he's all that kind of like panicked or, you know, rushing in order to get a new left back in. He, he, he has come out public, you know, uh, kind of like weird, weirdly saying about how he wants Lucas Moura and Robin Van Persie, but he has never mentioned a left back. Yeah, that might, you know, be used as a smoke screen for a potential move but you know it doesn't seem to me that he's gonna uh, want to get a new left back in this summer certainly anyway and I think that has shown you know through the preseason tour where he's played Tyler Blackett and also Robert Brady and I think the most likely outcome is for uh, Rory Brady to uh, be Patrice Everest understudy you know Brady's got good pace, good left foot on him, and although he has never played left back before, I think with the experience of Rio Ferdinand and Emmanuel Vidic at the back, I think that could help him, you know, during uh, league games or or the occasional outing within the Premier League. But going back to Sissoko, I think he would be available for 12 to 13 million pounds. Um, Leon, they don't want anything less than that because that's what I think they paid for, uh, you know, to Porto for his services a few years back. And they will want to recoup their money. Uh, Sissoko, he's a, like I said, an up and coming talent. And I'm sure that Leon won't want to uh, you know, get him uh, out for the cheap. And there has been other clubs that have been interested in him. Uh, you know, uh, Tottenham and Sunderland are reportedly uh, interested in him. But I think if we do want him, uh, the kind of like competition between us and the other would be no no problem. And I think just because of Manchester United's you know brand and heritage, I think he would definitely choose us over them. But I still doubt this move just because uh, Salex probably would spend the last remaining budget of the uh, uh, of the money uh, on a attacking player, you know, either Van Persie or another player. So I think that's probably more likely outcome for Salex to spend it on an attacking minded player rather than a fullback. And but anyway, what do you guys think of that story? Leave your comment below. And the last I want to talk about is to do with a player I actually uh, reported a few weeks ago. And it's to do with Axel Witzel. 
a lot of you guys has been mentioning his name within the comments and Twitter saying how good he is and you know how ideally suited he is to our team and this week uh, a Portuguese source called Ojogo sorry for the pronunciation again but apparently they have reported that we have uh, made a, a bid for him uh, around 23 and a half million pounds and a lot of you guys but again mention his name within a Twitter stream but I have you know told you guys about his 31 million pounds release clause and I think that is probably the, the money or the kind of like fee they're holding out for or somewhere near it you know the 28 29 million pounds mark just because um, Axel Witzel they only signed him last summer uh, Benfica so that he has a long way to run on his contract and that's probably the main reason they are able to hold on to him with a, such a high transfer fee and they're not going to want to not make a, a you know a profit that's what business is and so like I said Benfica would probably want to hold on until a, a club come in with a, a ridiculous amount like you know 30 31 million pounds i'm not sure if he's worth it you know one good season in Be uh, in portugal doesn't mean you're going to be a, a superstar straight away you need to prove it consistently over a couple seasons but he is uh, at a very good age you know 23 years old and you know would i think would immediately fit into our midfield um because uh, he is a box-to-box -box midfielder, much like Darren Fletcher, you know. Uh, and Darren Fletcher, I think if he if we if he was fit, I don't think this uh, kind of like argument would even have started because Darren Fletcher is a quality player on his day, and so we don't need another player in order to fill his slot. But because of his illness, you know, there is a, a vacant space available within our midfield for a you know high energy uh, player who's going to charge in box to box and cause an all sorts of problem attack as well and Axel Witzel a lot of you guys seems to like him I myself haven't seen a lot of him I've seen you know the occasional league match and also I saw him a couple of times with when they played us and against Chelsea as well and he looked you know good but it wasn't anything exceptional uh, that I saw that would you know uh, persuade me to spend 30 million pounds on him but like I said he is a good age and definitely fits within our transfer policy of being 23 and has a lot of time to develop at a club but you know 24 25 million pounds might be the maximum that we might bid for him if this is even true but uh, like I said I'm not sure if we were are going to buy him because Benfica they have a lot a long running contract and would hold on for that higher mark so anyway what do you guys think of that story leave a comment below so there you guys have it for another episode of United's Transfer Talk I hope you like this video guys and please uh, rate this video comment below in the box and communicate with other United fans and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this I'll have uh, match report on last night's match against Hanover 96 out later today um, yeah so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time cheers